Good morning. I'm in Yokohama right now and just finished filming a collab with the uh, Hachiko District. Really cool guys. So just took down like a massive, like fatty A5 beef brisket. Can't wait to show you guys this video. It'll be on the Food Channel. Um, since I'm here, like it's like an hour away from Tokyo. I don't want to go back just yet. So let's go to Chinatown. I haven't been there in like a year and a half. Probably shouldn't be that crowded right now. It's a weekday. Let's go get some dumplings. You know, the best thing to do after eating some brisket is some soup dumplings. There's tons of these little dumpling and uh, soup dumpling and fried dumpling shops all along this main strip. And honestly, they pretty much kind of taste the same. So my recommendation is pick one that has the dumplings that just came out. Like they're full. So you get the hottest ones. Cold dumplings are very sad because nobody loves them. These are some really soupy, soupy, soupy dumplings. Oh, so hot too. Mm. Oh, I love you so much. A little toasty on one side too. A little vinegar is all you need. Oh, super meaty. Great textured dumplings. Mm. I gotta tell you, these actual soup dumplings are not bad. There's actually quite a bit of soup in here as well. For the most soup for your buck, definitely these little guys. I mean, you puncture it just a little bit and it just floods out. There's like almost no way of, of eating this without this juice just like completely overflowing. Just, I would say, this is what I do. Just let it leak out and shrink the stuff later. This is definitely a dumpling. You gotta take a sip. Oh, big chunks of meat in here too. So awesome. You just gotta be careful. If you put this in your mouth and you bite down without opening it first and drinking some of the broth, it might get all over your face and burn. This is what happened the first time I ate it. I was injured. That was not fun. So now when I eat this, I consider it lunch and also dumpling revenge. You burn me, I eat all your family. This is Chinatown. It's really one of my favorite places to go when I'm in Tokyo. Just the taste at home, it actually tastes really authentic. The noodles and dumplings. And speaking of noodles, this noodle shop is really good. Yangzhou Noodle House, they open? It says they're open, but I think they're closed. Ah, oh, it's so, such a shame. So guys, I found a restaurant in uh, back in Tokyo I want to hit up. But before I go, one of my favorite pastries in Yokohama, this place, it's awesome. thing is so good. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Just amazing sweet custard and fruits. Apple pie. And the apple is so juicy. Not only sweet but juicy and crunchy. Ah, oh, this thing with ice cream is even better. I cannot come to Oklahoma and not get one of these. For lunch, I want to go try something that I never had before. I figured if I was going to eat it anywhere, it had to be in Tokyo or Japan somewhere. It's conveyor belt sushi. Yay. I never knew how it's so fun this is having food just literally go by your face. You could just reach out and grab it it's like it's like a dream I used to have this is so cool so this is the most highly recommended stuff okay so grilled tuna I definitely want that crab Ooh, fluke This 
piece is falling apart on me. This is the king crab loin. No, I don't claim to know much about sushi. Still kind of a sushi noob. But that's pretty darn good to me. This rice is awesome. I mean, praises to the fish, but the rice is great. I wish you guys could smell this right now. That fish touched the tip of my tongue and just vanished. And you get this really nice like flavor of fat. And you taste that more like around the back of your tongue, you know? So it goes it does this whole thing where it hits the tip of your tongue and the flavor just drives it all the way back there. And the rice actually dissipates at almost as fast as the fish disappears. <laughs> wow. This is the grilled tuna head. Hmm. Mm, there's a hint of sweetness to that. Wow, it's so much smoky flavor to this. Mm, the last piece was all about the lap. This piece was all about the flavor of the fish. So incredibly yummy. The fish flavor is clean, the texture is lean, but God. Combine that with just a slight touch of brown ginger. And again, that kiss of wasabi really just brings that home to the taste buds, you know? Mm. Sorry, what I just had was the tuna cheek. This is the tuna head, but I can tell you, there's not a single bad cut of tuna ever. Mm, that's fattier than a sumo match. Wow. Man. First the fatty salmon, then the fatty tuna. That's a key word I look for now in sushi. Fatty. My lips touched all that yummy oil. It's like, it's like fishy lip balm. Is it, is it, doesn't it look prettier now? I'm glistening. It's so cool because they give you free matcha. So you just put some matcha in your cup hot water right here. Make yourself some matcha tea. All you want. Sea fluke. Mm -hmm. That might have been my favorite one. I wish I cut everything off this menu. Oh, that was amazing. Sea fluke with a little snappiness and a whole lot of meltiness. Man, this thing is both tender and it's got a nice mouthfeel at the same time. Mmm, I love a little bit of sear. Mm. I'm only kind of sad because like, there hasn't been a lot of good food on the conveyor belt itself. I've pretty much been ordering from the menu. That's kind of takes away from the experience a little bit, I think. That tamago keeps appearing every couple minutes. See, I feel like these are reject items. Nobody ever wants it. And then there's that cheesecake. Let me show you. I just keep seeing it. No one ever takes it. Oh, I think someone finally claimed that cheesecake. I haven't seen it in a while. Oh, never mind. There it is. I've seen this cheesecake go in front of my face about 20 times. I think that's cheesecake. Yeah, that's cheesecake. Like, I want it, but I'm thinking, like, someone must know something I don't. That's why they're not taking it. Yeah. I mean, the food was good. I just wish it was more conveyor belt centric. There's something else I want to try, so I want to save a little stomach space. Such a chill day today. Ooh, okay, gotta figure out where to go. Ugh, KFC. Ever since that buffet, I came and looked Colonel in the eye. Every time I look at him, I can just taste the soggy, greasy chicken that they served at the How You Can Eat buffet. Ugh. I wanted some dessert, so I figured, because McDonald's just came out with a 
with a rice burger and a Kit Kat McFlurry. So I figured I'll go get a rice burger and then a Kit Kat McFlurry. Sold out. Sold out. Donald's number two. It's two for two. This Kit Kat McFlurry is like, kind of reminds me of when I was looking for the spicy chicken sandwich. This thing actually seemed to be sold out a long time ago. They even had a sticker attached to the picture of the McFlurry saying that it was sold out. This might be a whole countrywide thing. I give up, I've been out all day. So I'm gonna go back to the Airbnb. I'm gonna get a little rest. Um, and now I'm gonna hit the gym. And the gym is all the way in Ginza. So I'll go to Ginza's McDonald's and I'll check it out there. It'd be a good uh, pre-workout snack, you know? Rice burger and uh, Kit Kat McFlurry. Yeah, you eat it and then you burn it off and you feel like a sense of accomplishment. Just to give you guys an idea of where my mind's at all the time. In Chinese characters, this says Hui Hua which means uh, painting, okay? I thought it said Hui Mian, which means noodles. Cause that kind of looks like, if you do this, it kind of looks like Mian. That's my mind all the time. Like, I just, idiot. Okay, third McDonald's I've been to. Still sold out at the um, Kit Kat McFlurry. I don't know why this thing is so popular. Just Kit Kat and, and ice cream, right? So, got an idea. So I bought, some Kit Kats. And I even bought like this Ruby Kit Kat. We're making our own Kit Kat flurry. Crumpled up Kit Kats. Check. McDonald ice cream. Check. Kit Kat McFlurry. Homemade, sort of. I didn't make the ice cream with a Kit Kat, but home combined. Kind of get the hype now. This is pretty good. <laughs> Ruby chocolate Kit Kat. It's a little warm in here, so this thing's kind of melting, but a little added fruity flavor. Dare I say. I think my Kit Kat mixture is better than the one McDonald's serving. Mm, I think it's delicious. I really do feel like mine's better. A little fruity flavor inside the McFlurry. A world difference. It's like eating Kit Kat McFlurry in a garden. You're in Japan, you got access to all these different flavors. Bring different flavors, come to McDonald's, try it out. Isn't Kit Kat McFlurry like pale compared to let's say sake Kit Kat McFlurry or cheesecake Kit Kat McFlurry, right? Go get some different flavors. Go stop by Don Quixote 7-Eleven, get some different flavors, try it out. Do not let McDonald's limited supply of dish stop you. And how are you running out of this McDonald's? It's ice cream. Tell your staff to go buy some Kit Kats and crumple it in. Like, I don't understand why you're out of this. All right, now, now let's check out this rice burger business. Got the teriyaki because I feel like with a rice burger, teriyaki is a pretty good sauce. Ooh. Oh, that is wet. Oh, that is, this is one wet burger. Oh man. Oh, don't even really know how to approach this. And somehow I figured the rice patty would be bigger. That is just not the prettiest looking thing. Mayonnaise, oh, it's, it's, it's breaking apart. Okay, it doesn't hold up well. You gotta kind of support it like a baby's butt. I mean, this is definitely a, a messy, messy burger. And the bun is not, it's not very stable. So you gotta kind of support it a little bit with both hands. Like a, and the sausage patty is massive. All right, the flavor's not bad. Just like I thought, teriyaki sauce, rice, good combo. Very nice. But the teriyaki sauce with the abundance of mayo that's on this thing, that's a little too excessive. I mean, you see all that mayonnaise on the bottom. Oh God, that with that flood of sweet teriyaki sauce. I don't think the mayo and the teriyaki sauce is a bad combo, but it's, a, it's just a lot. I actually like the rice. It's got a nice chew to it. The chicken, I mean, just like one of those breakfast sausages, like chicken breakfast sausage things. Can't say it's good. Can't say it's bad. I think overall the flavor is good. The concept's good. A little less mayonnaise. 
I mean, this is a pretty decent sandwich. I mean, look, Rice Burgers is not new. Okay, McDonald's did not invent this. Like, Moss Burger's been serving this for so long. Like, I remember years, years ago in Taiwan, Burger King was doing Rice Burgers. I mean, the, the rice bun, it's got a better texture, more chewy texture, more substance than it just a kind of fall apart um, regular hamburger bun. But I do kind of wish they took more chances in terms of like putting a better patty in here, like a, like, like a, like a real piece of chicken, you know? And I don't know why I got this. I just saw it. I like, I don't know, sucker for cinnamon buns. I feel like it took a bite of Dubai, you know? Just really dry. I guess I can kind of douse it in the cinnamon sauce, but otherwise, whew, that was a that was kind of a mistake on my part. I'm not a bad pre-workout meal. That's so sad. Tomorrow's my last day here, so every single day I feel like I'm in mean, this place is kind of precious, you know. Even eating McDonald's, I will treasure this. I did have fun making the Kit Kat flur McFlurry though. You really should try that. Anyway, guys, I will take you to the gym, but Gold's Gym here, no photos, no camera, no video, nothing. So. Next time, back in the States maybe. Anyway, thanks for following along with me today. And if you wanna know where I am in real time, you wanna kinda get a little exclusive content. I do a lot of stories on Instagram, a lot of cool posts, so follow me on Instagram. I need more Instagram followers. I don't, I just, I don't know why I just really like Instagram. All right, gotta go, good night.